Hi boys and girls. Um, it's time for another Bible class. Um, I'm actually doing this on Saturday afternoon. It's beautiful outside. I hope you can get out and enjoy this gorgeous day before the rain starts. Um, the flowers, uh, the daffodils, and crocuses, and I think they're called hyacinths. They're pink and purple. Um, flowers that kind of go up like this and stick out like this on a plant. Um, they're blooming. The trees are starting to bloom. I've seen some gorgeous pink trees. I believe those are called magnolia trees and some white trees out. It is windy a little bit. I can hear the wind um, outside my sunroom here, but uh, so thankful to God for making such a lovely world for us to live in. I read once in a book that was my son's book right after he was born. Our small group gave us a book and in that book there was a poem that talked about all the colors God made and the last line in the poem said, I am so glad for colors so bright. God could have made our world all black and white. So get out there and enjoy the sunshine. Um, hopefully today too, uh, which is tomorrow <laughs> from when I'm making this, but when you're watching it. So um, how many of you that watched last week went and looked up what a leafy sea dragon looks like or a mantis shrimp? Um, if you did, you can... Um, reply or send me a comment um, so I know that you did that. Um, they're so gorgeous. If you didn't do that, be sure and do that. Since last week we talked some about the awesome things that God made in his creation, I thought we'd start today by doing a little game. And this game is called, sorry, I forgot where I put the thing, In His Hands. If you've been in my Bible class before, you probably did this, but it'll be fun to do this as a review about um, what God made. So let's start out with, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the, what would the answer be? Earth, right? God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. Um, what did God place in the sky? What did God place in the sky? You might say clouds, you might say um, moon, stars, or you might say sun, right? God placed the sun in the sky. Okay, what did God make on the fifth day that he was creating? Did he make plants and trees or did he make fish and birds? Which one would you pick? Fish and birds, plants and trees? The correct answer is fish and birds. Fish and birds. What did God say about his creation? What did God say when he was all finished creating? What did he say about it? Did he say, I love it. Did he say, good job, or what? In the scripture, it says he said, it was good. It was good. And then when he got done creating Adam, he said it was very good. Okay, what did God create on the first day? On the first day, 
God said, let there be light, right? Light. Okay. What did God call the dry land? What did God call the dry land? Ground, is what we call it. In, in the Bible, it says in Genesis 1, he called it earth. Earth is another word for the dry ground. Um, what did God make on the second day? What did God make on the second day? Sky. He separated the ground. The It says he separated the waters below from the waters above and created the sky or the heavens. What did God name the first man? I'm sure you can all get this right. Was it Abraham, Noah, or Adam? Adam, Abraham, they both start with A. Noah, it was Adam, right? Adam. And what was the first woman's name? Eve, right? And then the last one we have here is when did God make the animals? What day? You know, we sing the song, day one, day one, God made light when there was none. What day did he make the animals? Day six, right? Six day, six day, God made animals and men that day. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little game. Um, just kind of a little review, something, sorry, something different. I'm not supposed to be touching my face. Um, something different to um, start our lesson today. Um, okay, we're going to turn in our Bibles for our lesson today to Matthew chapter 13. This is a parable that Jesus told. Um, in your Bible, it might say parable of the farmer scattering seed. It might say parable of the sower. Um, it's easier for you to understand farmer scattering seed. Um, the sower, that's what they used to call farmers. Uh, another word back in Bible times and the way that they would sow their seed was they would have like this um, bag um, we we have those nowadays um, they go over one shoulder and hang down and you can put stuff in the bag and it was a big open kind of bag and the seed would be in there and so they would reach their hand in and they scatter the seed sow the seed. That's the way they would do it. They didn't have the big machines and um, tools that we have nowadays to be able to plant our fields like farmers. Uh, if you've gone by a big field like a corn field or a soybean field during springtime planting time when farmers are planting, um, you'll see the big equipment that they use. To plant but they did it by hand and they walked around and, and sowed the seed or scattered the seed so we're going to read this story from God's Word Matthew chapter 13 I hope you'll follow along listen oh start starting in verse 3 I'm sorry he told many stories in the form of parables such as this one listen a farmer went out to plant some seeds as he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, 
other seeds fell on fertile or good soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Okay, so we have four kinds of soil. The seed fell on hard ground, the footpath, and the birds came, snatched it away. We have the rocky soil where the roots couldn't get down in because of the rocks and it died. We have the thorny soil that the thorns just choked it out and it couldn't get the sun and what it needed and, and so it died. And then we have the good soil that grew and produced a lot of crops. Now the neat thing about this parable is that Jesus told the disciples the meaning of the parable. If you look in verse 18, it says this. The seed is those who hear the message. Okay, the seed is the word of God. Okay, who sows the word of God? Who's the sower? Who's the farmer? Okay, it's God through us. We're the ones that are supposed to go out and be sharing the seed, the word of God, the good news. What is the word of God? The word of God is good news for people. You don't have to do this life alone. It's not up to you. God sent Jesus and he died and then he rose again so that we could have a relationship with God. I hope you want that as the most important thing in your life. I hope you want that more than anything, to have a relationship with God. And so we are those, those who believe God and who have obeyed his word are those who go out and sow the seed. And when we sow the seed, the seed's going to fall on four different kinds of hearts. So we're gonna look at those, okay? First one, oh dear, not too pleasant looking, is it? This is a hard heart. This is the seed that fell on the hard ground that the bird snatched it up right away. In his explanation, Jesus says that the devil comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. This is a heart so hard, the word can't get down into it. The owner of this heart might hear the word of God, might hear the good news, but doesn't pay any attention to it. He or she says, don't bother me with that stuff. You're wasting my time. Get lost. Mm. The next seed that we have was the seed that fell on rocky ground. Uh, in verse 20, Jesus says, the seed on the rocky ground is those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. This person hears about Jesus and wants to be saved from their sin. They want to follow Jesus, but they don't let the seed get down in to their lives. Now, how do we do that? Reading God's word, Praying, being with other Christians, listening to the Bible, Bible stories, worshiping God. So they don't do that. And the seed, the word of God, doesn't take root. Also, when someone might tease them or make fun of them for believing the Bible, believing in Jesus, um, following Jesus, not going along with the crowd, what the crowd wants to do, this person decides not to follow Jesus anymore. So it's the rocky or stony heart. The next one is the thorny heart. Jesus said, the seed that fell among thorns, verse 22, represents those who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries and cares of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. This person is happy to hear the word of God, but he, he or she push, puts it into a heart that is full of other things. Um, so full 
that there's no room for the Word of God, and it gets pushed out. The heart is full of uh, things of the world. Maybe the heart is so full of just being busy, just always being busy, never taking time to, to build your relationship with God. Um, busy with um, sports, busy with uh, being the number one student, busy with being uh, first in the band, the first chair in band, whatever um, is important to you, yourself, being full of yourself instead of being full of God and his word. And so it gets choked out by the thorns, the heart. There's no room for it to grow. There's no room for Jesus in this heart. And it gets choked out and dies. And then the last heart is the good heart. The heart that receives the soil, I mean receives the seed, listens to God's word and obeys it. This person who has this heart changes his or her life and lives to please God. Now, does that mean they're perfect? No, they make mistakes. And sometimes their heart might be thorny. Sometimes their heart might be rocky. But they, tr they want to serve God. They hear the Bible, they believe what it says, and they want to obey it. God is happy with this kind of heart. This is the kind of heart that I hope you want to have. Thank you for listening. Um, I appreciate it, and I hope this blessed you today. I hope you enjoy your day. Um, be thankful for your family, for your health, um, for a God who loves you so much that he gave his son for you. Um, bless you. See you again later. Bye.